Hi students, we are on to chapters three and four. I like to do these together. And this is the chapter where you will learn how to do formula writing and nomenclature for the next three study assignments. So uh, let's get talking about bonding. So the first thing we need to talk about is valence electrons. Valence electrons are going to be the outermost electrons, and they're going to be your S and P electrons for your main group elements. Now, what are main group elements? Well, if we look at the periodic table, they are these two rows right here, and then we skip all the transition metals, and then you have all of these over here. So it's all of the elements that have electron configurations that end in S or P. Now going back over here again, you guys, the outermost electrons. So those are going to be the electrons in your outer shell. So if you have an electron configuration that ends in 4S2, and then you guys have also a 4P3, obviously there's going to be three Ds inside there, then you know that the fourth shell is your outermost shell. Again, even though the electrons go 4S2 and then 3D10 and then pop back out into the 4Ps, the three Ds are still inside of the fourth shell. So the bigger, uh, the biggest number that you guys see right here is going to be your outermost shell and it's going to have your outer electrons in them. Okay, so why are we learning about valence electrons? Well, they're going to be responsible for the chemical properties of our atoms, so how they re will react, so how they behave um, in every way. And that means they participate in chemical reactions. Now, if we take a look at sodium down here, we can see that sodium has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. And if we write the orbital box diagram, it looks like this. Now, the shell that is on the outside for sodium, that's going to be the third shell, which is right here. And remember, in the third shell, we've got the S's, the P's, and the D's. But for our main group elements, we said the S's and the P's are going to be the outermost electrons. So on the outside, what we have is one electron in the 3s orbital right there. And because that is the outermost electron, sodium has one valence electron. Now all of these in here are core electrons, meaning that they're in shells that are inside of the outermost shell. So those electrons are core electrons, and that one electron in the 3s orbital is your valence electron. And this electron right here, your valence electron, is going to be what causes sodium's chemical characteristics. Okay, so how do we count valence electrons and core electrons? Well, this slide right here will show us what we do. We go ahead and write out the electron configuration. So for silicon, we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p2. You go all the way to the biggest whole number, which in this case is three over here. And so the third shell is gonna be your outermost shell. And what electrons do we have? out there. Well, we have two in the 3s and we also have two in the 3p. So for silicon, we have four valence electrons. Now, everything that's inside of the third shell those are all core electrons. Those are inside of the valence electrons. Now, going down to the bottom, we're going to take a look at germanium. Now, that's germanium, not geranium. Geranium is a flower. So, germanium has the electron configuration 
1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, and 4p2. Now, it might seem to us like the valence electrons are all three of those kinds out of there. The S's, the D's, and the P's right there. But remember, even though this right here is the order of how the electrons fill in the different subshells, the S shell is still outside the third shell. And those 3D10s right there, uh, the 3Ds right there, those are inside the fourth shell. So the uh, valence electrons that we have are in the 4S and the 4P. And right there, you guys can see, it says for you that there are four valence electrons. And inside the fourth shell, we've got the first, second, and the third shells. So we've got 28 core electrons if you add up 10, 6, 2, 6, 2, and 2. That'll be 28. Okay, so moving on to the next slide. Write out the electron configurations for these atoms and identify how many core and how many valence electrons we have for each. So... For magnesium, we would locate it and we would see that it's right there. It has 12 protons and 12 electrons. So where are those electrons going? Well, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. We have 12 electrons just to remind ourselves. And we have used up 6, 8, 10 so far, so we got to keep going. And the next place that the electrons go is into the 3s. And 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 2 is 12. Now, what is our biggest whole number there? What's the outermost shell? Well, that's the 3. And we have two electrons in the S subshell, the 3S subshell, and those are our valence electrons. So we have two valence electrons. I'll put a big V for valence and then a little E for electron and a minus sign and then apostrophe S. So two valence electrons. And then all of these right here are inside. So those are the core electrons. So we have six plus two plus two, so we have 10 core electrons for that one. Okay, sulfur. Sulfur is over here. So we have 16 protons and 16 electrons. So we can just go ahead and write the same electron configuration that we had for magnesium and then we can keep going so we have used up 12 electrons so far and we said we need to use up 16 so we have four more to place and those will go in the three p's so we have three p four right there so you guys can see that magnesium was 3s2 so to go to sulfur we have 3p1 2 3 and 4 okay so again our biggest whole number that's going to be our outer shell and that's number three because three is bigger than two and that's bigger than one so we have two plus four there, so we have six valence electrons here, and these are our core electrons right there, and we have the same number as magnesium. We have 10 core electrons for sulfur. Okay, bromine. Bromine is all the way down here, so we've got 35 electrons to put in our electron configuration. So let's get going on that. We have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 
3s2, 3p6, and 3p6 takes us all the way right here to argon. And so then we're going to do 4s2 right here. So 4s2. And then after the 4s comes the 3ds. So these are our 3ds. So remember that these are shifted down one on the periodic table. And the ds come in fives and they can each hold two electrons and that makes 10 total. So we've got 3d10 and we're still not to bromine. We're back now to four, so we've got four P. So we have four P, one, two, three, four, five, four P, five. Okay, now our valence electrons again are gonna be our outermost electrons. So those are the electrons in the outermost shell. So we have one, two, three, and four. The fourth shell is our outermost shell. Now the three Ds right here, even though the electrons fill in the three D orbitals after the four S, the three Ds are still inside the fourth shell. They're in the third shell, closest to the nucleus. So for bromine, we have two plus five so we have seven valence electrons and if we want to do core electrons we've got to count them up so we've got 10 plus 6 which is 16 plus 2 18 plus 2 is 20 plus 6 is 26 plus 2 is 28 Okay, 28 core electrons there. Alrighty, then we have Krypton. And Krypton is right next to bromine. So yay, we can piggyback off of bromine right there. And for Krypton, we can say that instead of 4P5, what we have is 4P6. So same electron configuration, just one more electron there. So 4p6. This would mean that we would have eight valence electrons for krypton, and we'd have the same number of core electrons. You guys can count that up for yourselves. Now, uh, six and two right here, that brings up us up to eight valence electrons and what we'll find is eight is a magic number so if you have eight valence electrons you have something called an octet and that's going to make the atom very stable and we can see on the end that everybody that ends in some kind of p6 is gonna be in the noble gas column. And we learned in chapter two that our noble gases are very stable. And that's because they have an octet. That's a magic number. The one that uh, doesn't fit this mold is helium right here. Helium has an electron configuration of 1s2. Now that's also stable and helium's also a noble gas because the S shell only has a single orbital. It only has one subshell, the S. And when it's full, you have two electrons there. So that one is a little bit different. So if you have either eight, so right here you would see that we've got three S2 and 3p6, that's 8. 8 makes an octet. Or just 2, if you are helium, that would be a duet. You're stable, okay? So S2 
and P6 makes eight valence electrons and it makes for a stable atom and that is called an octet. And we'll see that again soon. If you completely didn't understand what I'm talking about, that's okay, we'll talk about it again. All right, so Krypton, it's the noble gas and you guys can see that it has 4s2, 4p6, which gives us eight valence electrons, which means it has an octet, which means that it's very stable and it's a very happy element. And when you're happy, you don't go around reacting with other people. Okay. So elements are like us when they're happy, they're not reactive. Okay. All right. So how can we use a shortcut? Well, that's going to be our Lewis dot structures. So what we do to make a visual of how many valence electrons we have on an atom is we use uh, little dots to indicate valence electrons around the atomic symbol. So the electron configuration for oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. So we are right here. Okay, so we've got p4 on the end there. So if we're looking for core electrons and valence electrons, we would go, okay, the biggest whole number is two, and that's the outermost shell, and we've got two plus four, which is six. Now those two electrons in the 1s orbital, those are core electrons. So we would draw the symbol for oxygen, which is O, and we would distribute dots around the O to symbolize valence electrons. Now, what we do when we're writing it is we put one dot around each side before we pair any of them. And then it's your choice which ones you pair first. The bottom diagram shows the top and to the right, but I'm gonna draw it the top and to the left because it doesn't matter. And that is the Lewis dot structure for the element oxygen. Now let's practice with a few more. So lithium, lithium has three protons and three electrons. So it has the electron configuration of 1s2, 2s1. So the valence electron here is just this one right here, just one. So how you would write that is you would say lithium with a dot, or you could put lithium with a dot, or you could put lithium with a dot. Let me make that darker. There we go. So you can also put lithium with a dot on the bottom, but it's just convention that we don't do that. So it's not wrong, you just won't see it. Okay, so beryllium. Beryllium is right here next to lithium. So that means it's got one more electron. So beryllium would be 1s2, 2s2, and right here we can see that those are our valence electrons. So for beryllium, you need two dots. So you can do it like that, or you can do it like that, or you can do it like that, any way you want. And then that brings us to bromine. And bromine is over here. And we did the electron configuration for bromine back here. And we saw for bromine that we had 4s2 and 4p5. So what we have written right now is the electron configuration for krypton, but when we did bromine, we had 4s2 and 4p5 for our valence electrons. So that gives us 5 plus 2, and that is 7. So for bromine, what we would write is bromine 
symbol for bromine, and then we would pair them. So you guys can see that we've got seven valence electrons or seven dots around the bromine. Now, if we're looking for an even bigger shortcut, instead of writing out the whole electron configuration for each atom, we can take a look at the periodic table. And the periodic table is going to give us a clue um, as to how many valence electrons your atom has. Because when we look back at these problems right here, we can see that writing out the electron configuration for bromine and krypton uh, took quite a bit of time. So let's do another shortcut over here. So looking at the periodic table, what I want you guys to notice is the numbers at the top. So up at the top here, you'll see that you have a 1 or a 1a or 1a written in Roman numerals. Any way you cut it, there's a 1 up there. So one version of the periodic table, like we talked about in class, has the A groups, so if you can see a little 2A right here and the 1A here, and then the 3 right here. And then the other version will do 1 through 18. Either way is correct, and they're both going to give you a clue as to how many valence electrons you have available. So in the first column, you're going to have one, one A or one A, and that means that you have one valence electron. Hydrogen, lithium, sodium, and potassium all have one valence electron. Group two right here, two or two A, those all have two valence electrons. We're going to skip the transition metals because that's what we're going to do. And we're going to come on over here and you'll see that this is group 3A or 13. Either way, it's got a 3 in it. And that means you guys have three valence electrons. So aluminum, boron, excuse me, and the rest of them are going to have three valence electrons. 4A or 14, how many valence electrons do those have? Four, you're right. And then group 15 or 5A, we've got five valence electrons. So that means that the electron configuration would end in S2P3. So you'd have three plus two, which would equal five, okay? So oxygen and sulfur and the rest of them, group 6A or 16, so we've got six valence electrons. The halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, group 17 or 7A, and they have how many valence electrons? Seven, that's right. And the fact that they have seven valence electrons makes them very reactive because everybody wants eight. Everybody wants to be like the noble gases and have eight valence electrons. They want to have an octet, they want to be like them. So the halogens that have seven valence electrons, they go around trying to steal an electron from somebody else, and that makes them very reactive. And we'll see that later in the chapter. So going back to our problems right here, uh, bromine. If we look at bromine right here, it is in group 17 or 7A, so it should have seven valence electrons. And look what we drew right here. We drew seven valence electrons on our bromine. Carbon, carbon is in group 4A or 14. So that means that it has four valence electrons. So we're gonna draw carbon with four valence electrons. Now remember you wanna distribute your single electrons around the symbol on each side before you pair any of them. Nitrogen. Nitrogen is right here. It's in group 15 or 5A. So it has how many valence electrons? Five, that's right, okay? So nitrogen, we go one, two, three, four, five, 
and you could pair the one on the left or the right also instead of the one on the top. You could do this. You could pair the one on the bottom, but we just don't we just don't write it like that. So you guys won't see it like that. Now neon. Neon is a noble gas. So if it's a noble gas, it is pretty non-reactive. So without even looking at the periodic table, take a guess as to how many valence electrons it has. Probably eight. That's an octet that's going to give your atom stability. And if we look for neon, we can see right here, indeed, it is in group 18 or 8A, which means it has eight valence electrons. So neon, we know it has eight, so we can just draw two, 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 and two. And that is the Lewis dot structure for neon. So if you didn't like all of my drawings, you can take a look at this handy dandy little chart right here and take a look at the Lewis dot structures for some other elements. I want to point out an anomaly for you guys. Notice how helium is in group 8A or 18 right there. And all of the other noble gases have an octet. Well, we already talked about helium, and then it only has a single electron orbital around it, and that's the 1s. And the 1s can only hold two electrons. So that orbital or that shell is full with two electrons in it, and so that is also a noble gas, and that is called a duet. All right, at the very bottom, we can write our atoms with their noble gas abbreviation electron configurations right here and we can see that everybody in the first column right here has one valence electron so lithium it's got one electron and it's 2s Sodium has one electron in its 3s, and potassium has one electron in its 4s. So there is your single 2s electron, here's your single 3s electron, and here's your single 4s electron on lithium, sodium, and potassium. Now lithium, sodium, and potassium are also very reactive like the halogens except it's for the opposite reason. The halogens over here, they all have seven valence electrons and they desperately want to steal another electron from somebody else so that they can have eight valence electrons and they can look like the cool kids, the people next to them, the noble gases right there. They want clothes like the cool kids. Now, over here, the alkali metals, they have the opposite problem. They need to get rid of that one outer electron, that one valence electron. If they could just get rid of it, then they could have a duet or an octet because they wouldn't have that outer electron and they would look like the noble gas that precedes them. So if lithium loses that one electron right there, it has the electron configuration 1s2, and that is the noble gas that precedes it. So helium has an electron configuration of 1s2. If we take a look at sodium, if it gets rid of that one valence electron, you can see inside here how this drawing shows you that there's eight valence electrons. It's gonna be the two S electrons and the six two P electrons. So if sodium loses this electron, it goes back this way so it's going to have the electron configuration of neon and look right here that symbolizes the electron configuration for neon now potassium is going to do the same thing 
if it loses that one electron right there, it's going to have the electron configuration of a noble gas. And everybody wants to be like the noble gases. Everybody wants to have eight valence electrons in octet. So if, oh, did I say krypton before? Not krypton, potassium. Oops, if I said that. If not, ignore me. Okay, so potassium loses that one valence electron and it goes to having the electron configuration of argon. And it really likes that because everybody likes to have an octet. So humor break. What is a pirate's favorite element? Argon. What is a pirate's favorite element? You're thinking I'm crazy and you already told me it's argon. And you would think, but it's actually the C. Okay, I'm going to stop right there and upload this and continue on later so the file isn't too big. I will see you in a little bit, you guys.